In view, we have what is called the view router. This allows you to hook up paths or routes to view components. View route transitions are one quick and easy way to improve the view app. They allow you to smoothly transition from one page to another. In this video, we'll take a look at how to set up route transitions and a few examples of how to use them correctly. Let's get started. First, we need to create a new view project. Within VS Code, let's open up a new terminal window and use View's official build tool to scaffold out a new project. To initiate this, we need to run the command npm init view at latest. This will prompt you with a few options for creating the project. For the name, we'll leave this as the default value, and then it will give us some options for features that we want to add. For the sake of this video, we'll only be selecting the view router, which is the third choice. For everything else, we'll select no. Then we need to CD into the folder created and install all of the dependencies. Once completed, we can start the local development server by running the command npm run dev. By default with this tool, we receive some starting code. For this video, I'm going to be removing a majority of this, leaving just the app.view file and two files within the views folder. If we take a look at the application within the browser, we have the navigation to toggle between pages and then each page's content. This is being handled within the app.view file where we have a tag router view, which renders in the current route. Now, currently in the browser, as you can see, when we switch between pages, it's just instant. Having a smooth transition will help improve the user experience on your application. To add this using view, we're going to be using what is called the transition component, which is built into the framework. And this allows for smooth animations and transitions to be integrated easily into view applications. To start, here inside of app.view, the first thing that we need to do is update our router view tag here from being self-closing to having a closing tag. And the reason why we need to do this is because to properly transition the route, view has a special way that we need to do this. Next, to get access to the current component that should be rendered based on the route, we need to pass a V slot here on our opening router view tag. So let's define a V slot here and we'll set this equal to, and then we'll do some curly brackets here and we're going to destructure our props here. And what we want to get out of here is what we call the component, which will give us access to the component that we want to render. Now to display the current component, we're going to be using another built-in feature from view called the meta component. So let's define that here within our router view tags. And this has a self-closing tag at the end. Now what this does is it actually renders in dynamic components based on a prop called is here. And what we can do is take our V slot value of component and bind it to this is prop to display the current component. Inside the browser, as you can see, if we switch between routes here, everything works as it did before, but now we have everything set up to actually incorporate some route transitions. In order to add transitions to the routes, we first need to wrap our meta component here inside of a transition component. So what I'll do is actually use Emmet here to wrap with an abbreviation and we'll just define transition here. As I mentioned earlier, this is a special component built into view. I actually did create a video on this component. If you are interested in learning more, I'll have the link down below in the description. But the TLDR for this video is that this component is going to apply classes, which we can target within our styles here to properly animate the routes. On the transition component, we need to add a few props here. The first one we're going to add is called name. And what this does is give our transition a unique name to target within our style sheet. And we'll see this here in a moment. But for now, we'll just call this page and we'll say opacity here. Next, we're going to also add a prop of mode here, which I'm not going to cover this too much, but we're going to say out in here. And what this basically means is it's going to do the leaving transition first and then the in transition. Before we continue on with the video, let's take a quick break to hear from today's sponsor, View School. On the 13th and 14th of July, View School is organizing the largest hands-on Vue.js event ever, Vue.js Forge. This is a hackathon style event where you'll be teaming up with thousands of other Vue.js developers from around the world to build a Trello clone using Pinia, Vue Router, and Nux.js 3. You'll be able to hear from some experts in the Vue.js community, including the creator of Vue, Evan Yu, which will provide you guidance to help you build this application. Oh, and the best part is, it's free. Be sure to head down to the link in the description to reserve your free ticket, because the event is happening in only a few days. Now that we have our props added, let's look at how we can start to target the classes needed to begin transitioning our routes. 
By default, if we didn't pass this name prop here of page opacity, the class structure would look like this. It would be v enter from, v enter active, v enter to, followed by v leave from, v leave active, and v leave to. But since we added this name prop here, page opacity, this is going to take the place of the V portion of the class name. So for example, instead of having it say V enter from, it'll be page opacity enter from. So inside of the style sheet, let's begin to target our classes here. And to save time, I'm just going to copy and paste these in here. So first off, what we're gonna do is we're going to define two classes here, page opacity interactive and page opacity leave active. Now what these two classes do is control the time of the actual transition. Now for the actual transition, we need to add two more classes. And these are going to be page opacity enter from and page opacity leave to. So essentially what this is saying is what we want the page to enter from, which is going to be an opacity of zero, and what we want it to leave to, which is going to be an opacity of zero. Now we don't need to define enter to and leave from because the default value of an opacity is one. And this is actually all the CSS we need to add a very simple fade in and fade out transition to our route. And if we switch pages here, as you can see, we're going to have a very nice fade in and fade out of our route as we go back and forth between pages. So let's take a look at another example. For this transition, we're going to be creating a slide effect where the page is going to fade in and slide up. And when the page leaves, it's going to slide down and fade out. For this, we're going to change the name from page opacity to page slide. Then within our style sheet here, I'm going to copy and paste in some more selectors. So we're going to have page slide interactive and also page slide leave active. Now for this one, we're going to have a transition of 400 milliseconds. Then we need the selectors for the transition itself. So we'll have here page slide enter from and page slide leave to. Now for this, we're gonna be using two CSS properties. We're gonna be using opacity still, but we're also gonna be using another property called transform to translate the page on the Y axis by 60 pixels. And here inside of our application, as we switch pages, what's gonna happen is the current page is going to slide down and fade out. And then the new page is gonna fade in and slide up here. All right, those are some simple yet effective examples of how you can add transitions between your routes. Now that you have an understanding of how to incorporate these, definitely have fun with it and try creating some cool transitions yourself. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, a like would be much appreciated. It really helps out the channel. And be sure to subscribe for more content. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.